This is Kat's Diamond Painting. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've joined me here before. I'm here today to do a kitten chat. I am kitting up my entry for the Spring Alongathon that DAC Fans UK on Facebook is running. I'll explain more about that in a minute. And I am going to be working on Floyd the Fabulous Fish Whisperer. It's a, a Richard Lorenz, as you can see, and I'm so excited to work on this one. Um, so if you want to see more of the actual kit, go check back on my channel. Um, I unboxed this last March and it will actually be labelled as a first look because one of the reasons why this kit is very special to me and I've been excited to work on it is because it was the first kit I had after Diamond Art Club accepted me for sneak peeks. But it did actually come a bit late so it was a, a first look. Um, so yeah, there was that. But also it's a Richard Lorenz and I love Richard Lorenz kit so yeah. Lots of reasons to be excited about this one. Okay, so let me get myself set up while I explain. Um, so yeah, Diamond, what am I talking about? DAC fans, ooh, oh dear. <laughs> My guillotine gets gummed up with um, the sticky paper that I use uh, for labels for my shop. And then it can't cope. Oh dear, that needs a proper clean somehow, doesn't it? So I go to cut just normal, normal bits of paper and it does that and that irks me even though this is really just to, here to sit in the box and just be there in case I need a key. But I will tidy that up so it doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, so DAC Fans UK is a Facebook group and as you'd imagine from the name, it is for fans of DAC within the UK. So if you are a DAC fan in the UK and you haven't yet joined, do consider doing that. It's a great group, really fun, lots of community and just loveliness. Um, let's get my other guillotine out to cut this now because I will need this in half so that I can do use my sticky labels. That's better. Um, so yeah, they are doing their second event at the moment. They did one in the autumn for Halloween, which I also participated in. And this is the Spring Alongathon. <laughs> and it's running from, well, yesterday actually, which was the 29th of March until the end of May, I believe. <coughs> but like I'm kitting up and starting late. You can start late. So if this sounds like your kind of thing, you know, you can still join in. Um, but yeah, just join the group and then follow the instructions to join. You don't have to finish either, so it's a very laid back event. But in two months, I mean, I would definitely hope to finish this piece and more. So we shall see. Um, okay, I am going to be using a new art dot case because I've been wanting to get this design for a while. And it was on offer, it only cost me, I think, £15. But also, let's be serious here, laziness. Laziness is the big reason, because I have a lot of storage and most of it is occupied. Because I've got really, really lax at kitting down. It is bad, guys, I can't be doing this. <laughs> no more storage for me after this one because I've, I've just got kits that I finished months ago still sitting around. It's because I want to keep my, my spare drills, but I've got really lazy about actually doing that because I find it all a big, a big hassle and a pain. So yeah, they kind of sit there for months. And then after a while, I might just, um, you know, decide to chuck all the drills out. But I keep them there in the hopes that I will get a big burst of motivation <laughs> to save some of them. I actually did put some away in preparation for this because this kit has 65 colours and this has got 60 bottles. So I cleared out these large tubs that I last used when I did a different Richard Lorenz, in fact, Myrtle, my Christmas painting. Um, so yeah, I, I cleared those out in preparation and I've kept the things out because you never know, maybe I will get more done later. Okay. Art dot cases come with all these bits and bobs. They're not particularly useful to me, but I guess it's always nice to have extras. Um, so yeah, I just really like their cases. I have several of these and I have several of the Elizabeth Ward style 
containers. And I know those ones are really popular and I do like them and I do still use them, but I do find more and more and more, I just end up going for the art dot cases. I think I just, <sighs> the Elizabeth Ward style ones are great for smaller paintings or medium sized paintings that I can fit all of them into one tray. I don't like having more than one tray is the thing um, because of the workspace I'm in. If I can avoid that, I will. And I just find I quite quickly run out of space with those. Whereas the art dot ones, okay, I might have lots and lots of um, colors where they don't all go in and I have to keep them loose, you know, elsewhere but I can have a little bit of all of the colours within quite easy reach. Sorry, some of the lids aren't on, so I'm just getting them on. And then what do I need to do? Right, so ordinarily I would just be sticking all my labels on now, but because I've got five extra ones, and these are obviously because they're really big, I want to use for the largest colours, I'm gonna go into my drills and find out what the largest colours will be. So. I cannot wait to get stuck into this kit. I love Richard Lorenz kits. I love the colour blue. <laughs> I love that this is a bit different to a lot of Richard Lorenz kits because of the colour palette. Um, and yeah, I just think it's going to be really fun. So, sorry if you can't hear me over the rattling of the packs. I'm going for the largest, the, the strip of drills that has the larger bags on because these are going to be my contenders, aren't they, for the big pots. So, oh my gosh, this is super rattly. Let me see. So, I think three, eight, four, three, and I haven't put these in the freezer or anything, so I'm really hoping they're not full of static. These ones look okay. So there's those. Two, three, tens may well need a larger pot. Ooh, loads and loads of this 995, so that's obviously one of them. And then two more colours to pick to go in there. Now I wonder, sometimes on the next strip down, there are a lot of duplicates. No, I don't see that. So, which are the next biggest? Probably these two that were at the end, I guess. I mean, there will be loads where I need to put a little bag in, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> in the roof of this, the roof, the lid, <laughs> um, because, you know, that, that is the way it goes with the Art Dot ones. You're not going to fill, you're not going to fit a large bag of drills into these, but that's fine. Okay, so these are my five that I'm going to put in these, and actually... Let's try and be prepared with some baggies for when I need those. And a marker pen. <laughs> Vaguely organised. Right, so I need to find the labels for these colours. And then after that, I'll just stick all the rest on here. There is method to my madness, honest. So 310, 3843. Uh, 931, 646, and 995. Absolutely masses of that colour in here. <laughs> oh, I haven't got a tray to kit up over. I don't know about you when you're kitting up, but I am very messy and I find if I don't do it over a tray, I just lose so many drills. Because as you will see, as I go through it, I'll lose loads anyway. So off we go. Right. So <laughs> there's my little sort of rambly introduction to let you know what I'm doing today. And now, how am I doing? It's been a while. Um, Actually, I think it's only been about a month. And I normally do these chatty videos maybe once a month. So yeah, it's, it's not actually been that long. I have on my notes, um, because I kind of keep a record on my phone of anything that happens, just to give me some prompts to talk about. 
um, and I sort of remind myself of what I've already covered so that I don't repeat myself too much. <laughs> I wouldn't dare to dream that I never repeat myself. Um, yeah, and apparently I last updated you up to the 29th of February. So yeah, it has been almost exactly a month. And yeah, how have I been? It's been... It's been busy, I say that every month though. Um, but yeah, it has been a pretty busy month. My son's been at school, but he's now on Easter holidays. It often seems to be holidays when I do these. I think I can fit that second bag in. Fingers crossed, otherwise it will annoy me. Oh, easily. Brilliant. Um, yeah, what's happened this, this month then? Well, the shop, first of all, has been nicely busy. Not um, insanely so, not, not like I couldn't keep up with it. There's been brief periods in the past where I've been like, Ooh, is this sustainable? Can I keep going at this pace? Um, but no, it's it's been pleasantly busy, I would say. I did have my Easter releases at the start of the month. I think it was like the 8th of March they came out. Um, so I did some limited edition Easter putties. I had three cents. So I had Easter bunny, Easter eggs, and hot cross buns. And I had great fun making the hot cross bun ones in the shape of a hot cross bun, uh, which amused me greatly. Um, and I sold those in a bundle as I usually do for limited edition things. In a little gift bag with an option of a cover minder and some cover minders on the side. And I thought I had plenty based on how the last limited edition ones are gone, the Valentine's ones. But apparently people were very into Easter parties because <laughs> those bundles sold out really quickly. Which was brilliant for me but also made me feel quite bad because... I am not trying to do kind of, you know, FOMO marketing <laughs> with the shop. <coughs> I aim to always have plenty of stock, um, particularly with limited editions. It, but it is a balancing act. You also don't want to make masses and masses and masses of something seasonal and then, you know, be selling it off at a discounted rate for weeks and weeks after. So what I wanted was enough stock to last two or three weeks until Easter and then be gone basically. And yeah, I misjudged it a bit. Obviously I needed more of the bundles. So lesson learned, next time I do a limited edition, I will bear that in mind. But yeah, not so many of those things coming up now really are there. We're moving into a different part of the year, but it won't be too long before I need to start planning my advent calendar for this, this year. Um, anyone who's been following along for a while, I did mention it quite a few times last autumn because, you know, it really dominated my, my shop planning and what I was doing. And I did a 12 day advent calendar, um, which was released the 1st of November and it did sell out that day, which I was really pleased about, but I couldn't, I couldn't make that many. <laughs> I made, um, a little over 40 and this year I will hopefully be able to make more. I'm not sure how many more, but yeah. But I can't plan it too much. I mean, obviously I've got ideas and things I'm mulling over, but I need to wait and see what kind of oils the fragrance oil shops come out with um, and see what I can get. Because obviously with it being an advent calendar, I would like to keep it quite Christmassy. Having done loads and loads of Christmas scents last year between the advent calendar and my non-advent calendar Christmas releases, part of me is like, well, how many? <laughs> How many Christmas scents are there really? So I'm wondering if maybe this year might need to be a mixture of non-Christmas and Christmas scents and then just, yeah, some other bits and bobs that I'm, I'm mulling over and hoping to get in there. But yeah, should be good, I hope. <laughs> so yeah, basically everything is going fine and dandy with the shop and I am still enjoying it and just really appreciating everyone's support. Uh, this week I did the, um, well last week rather, I released the members choice putty for March. So every month I have people make suggestions for what scent they'd like me to make. I check which oils I can actually get that are a good match and then I put them up in the group and people vote on them in a poll and then the winning scent gets made and the person who suggested it gets a free putty. So I've just been through that process for the April one. Um, 
and I know what it's going to be. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I won't say because, I mean, people can see it on the poll on my group if, if they're interested, but other people like it to be a surprise. So yeah, that's, that's, that's enough shop chat. <laughs> I, I'd try and find the balance because I had this channel a long time before I had the shop. So obviously the shop is, is a large part of what I now do. But at the same time, I know that not everyone is here because they're interested in my shop or they might not like putty or they, don't, they might just not want to hear me chatting about my shop. So whilst I'm probably always going to mention it because it's a big part of my life, um, I do try not to go on about it too much. I guess you guys would be the judges of how successful I am at that. Right, on we go. So this one I can tell straight away is not all gonna fit in a bag. So let's get on with it. Um, what else happened this month? We had Mother's Day here in the UK. It was quite early this year, I think. Um, so yeah, we had a nice quiet day around here. We don't tend to do too much for it because, I don't know, I'm just not wild about going out for dinner and that kind of thing on a day when it's it's super, super busy. So we don't tend to do that, but of course I do, I do not cook on Mother's Day, mind you. <laughs> I think my son needs to kind of reframe his thinking a little bit because when you're younger, when your kids are younger, like Mother's Day and Father's Day and stuff is, is about really your partner showing appreciation for what you do, isn't it? And your child is not old enough to really get that involved or be that invested in it. Now he's 10, he definitely still needs help, but he could do with starting to take a bit more of an interest, you know? I know that the present he got me, whilst I loved it, was very much of my husband's doing. And then my husband said in the morning, do you want breakfast? Do you want pancakes? Oh, that'd be lovely. Did my son help him? No, he just wanted to eat pancakes. Was he interested in helping make dinner later? No. <laughs> so yeah, he, he um, I mean, it's up to him, I guess, whether he wants to be interested in it. But certainly as he gets older, I would not be expecting my husband to make a fuss of me for Mother's Day when my son is capable. So we'll see how that pans out next year. <laughs> uh, but we did have a nice day and we watched a film in the evening. We watched Puss in Boots, which we've been meaning to watch for ages because last year, so my, my son has not been into watching films for long. For a very long time, he found films quite daunting and stressful because you know how like every film you ever watch, even if it's a kid's film or, or something very non-dramatic, it will have moments of dramatic tension because of course it does because they want to keep people's interest. And he would always find that really tough going and he'd be going along fine enjoying the film and then at that point he'd be like, no, I don't want to watch anymore, I don't want to watch anymore. Um, so we just, we never really watched films and then suddenly, sort of the start of last year, oh, <laughs> I should have tried putting those in there first because I didn't need this and now I've written on there. Um, he, he decided he liked them. So last Easter, we were staying in West Wales with my parents at their caravan and, hang on, didn't I? No, that was 3843. Um, and it was very, very rainy and windy when we went. It wasn't ideal caravan weather, to be honest. And we all got a bit stir crazy. Um, so one day, my husband and son and I went out to the local cinema. Oop. And they were showing Puss in Boots. Two, was it? Was it two or three? I can't remember now. But either way, we watched it. We all really enjoyed it. And we said, oh, we must go back and watch Puss in Boots 1. And we haven't until now. So I said, I'll never say, let's finally watch Puss in Boots. It was good fun. My husband and I have fond memories of the, the Shrek films that Puss in Boots came from. But my son still won't watch those. He, he does not like the ogre. We keep telling him, but he's a friendly ogre. <laughs> he's the hero, but no. He knows what he likes and he doesn't like that. And that's fair enough. <laughs> so yes, it was a quiet but nice day. Um, just how I like it. 
The following weekend, we went up to, uh, I was going to say where, but I, I won't do that because it's a fairly small place, but the town where my husband's parents live. Um, because his mum had had some health stuff, which I am not going to get into because, you know, it's not my immediate family and it doesn't feel right to, to talk about that. But she did have some quite serious health things going on and she had been in hospital for a little while. Um, and she's okay now. She's at home. She's recovering. Um, but yeah, we went up to see them for the day, which was nice. I took her my macaroni cheese, which, <laughs> we, you know when you see family and like you like to eat things your way and they like to eat things their way and there's maybe not too much overlap. Well, my husband's family and, and us, we have quite different eating tastes. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but we just do. So <laughs> whenever I see them and need to cook for them, it's a little bit stressful because, you know, I want to make things that they would like to eat, but obviously, you know, that we would like to eat too. But one of the things that I've made for them several times is macaroni cheese um, because macaroni cheese is one of my specialities. <laughs> um, I do make quite a good one, if I do say so myself. It is my son's second favourite meal that I make because it's important to rank things thoroughly. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I took up a big dish of that for them because as part of what she's got going on, she's stuck eating soft foods, like foods that can be mashed up. So a nice soft bowl of macaroni cheese gave her a bit of variety because it's just boredom really, isn't it? When you're, when you're limited by diet like that, you just get so bored of eating the same few things that you can manage. But yeah, she is much better. We're actually going away with them next week. Um, yeah, they, they booked us. Well, for my husband and my joint 40th birthday, they decided they wanted to take us away. So they have booked an accommodation, I think it's near Bath, where we're going. So we're going to be there for a few days with them, hoping it will be okay because my mother-in-law is still on a limited diet. So some of the things that we might normally have done, like eating out lots and that kind of thing, will be difficult and she can't walk that far. I mean, honestly, I do. I'm a little concerned that it's not going to be very comfortable for her and maybe we would be better postponing, but they are very keen for us still to go. So it looks like that is what we are doing. Hopefully it'll be fun. Anyway, what else have we been doing this month? Some of these stick down properly. <laughs> I, I was in a little bit of a diamond painting slump this month, I think. That's been slightly aggravating. I, If you've watched any of my other recent videos, I did a post review of three small kits I'd done and I mentioned it a little bit in there because I did this cute little Randall Spangler and it took me ages for the size of it because I just wasn't into it. And I think there's something about that painting that wasn't grabbing me, but also it was just a general just not wanting to sit and diamond paint as much as I normally do or I do this thing where I'll be intending to diamond paint for hours and hours and hours but just keep getting distracted by other things you know I pick up my phone have a chat with someone or or I just you know I'm like doom scrolling and doing all the silly things that we do that we know aren't very healthy for us where we're just far too addicted to our phones or it'll be really busy with work and I won't get around to it or I'll be too tired come the evening you know all the usual reasons but I have not done as much as normal I did a kitting up video for a Mooney maid recently and I thought starting that in early March that I would easily get that done before this event and I haven't so yeah, it's, I've just been going so much slower than usual. I am over halfway, but only by a little bit. Um, I'll see if I can actually get a picture up <laughs> so you can see how much progress I've made because it's looking fabulous. It really is good. I've done quite a bit the last week actually, so it's more that I couldn't get into it as much beforehand. Um, but then, I don't know, I was thinking should I push on and finish it? And maybe I should have done, but I wanted to join this event. And I thought, if I carry on with that one, 
it's going to take me probably at least another week and a half. Um, and then that takes me to going away. And then suddenly it's like two weeks into the event before I start. And I am also at the point where, although I am enjoying that one now, I'm, I'm also ready for a change because I like working on rounds as well as squares. I do always like to do both, but I don't last as long on rounds before I kind of feel like I need a break of them and I want to do some squares. <coughs> so, it'll all work out in the end, but yeah, it's, it's a little annoying because I wanted to get that one done, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, does it? It's a hobby, we're doing it for fun. There's no pressure about any of it really. I mentioned the um, the present that my son got me for Mother's Day with my with my husband's help, and I've I've really enjoyed that. So he got me one of those Lego flowers bouquets, um, and I oh I put it together in like two days. I loved it. So that's one thing I've been doing a bit recently is a little bit of Lego, including some fake Lego, you know, the kind you get on TikTok shop or, or places like that, because I, I would love 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 to get proper Lego, but a, the ones that I like, the really involved like modular series are expensive, like hundreds. And B, they're really big. They take up a load of space. And what do you do with them once they're done, you know? I don't have the house space to have them all set up. You definitely don't want to take it apart having put that much effort into it. So I have one I did a few years ago and it, it's in pride of place on a shelf in my living room. But I, yeah. I wouldn't know how to, to fit enough one in there. And the cheaper ones that you get are not as good, but they're pretty good for the price. And they're a lot smaller. They tend to be in sort of miniature. So anyway, this is the first proper Lego project I've done for a while. And I have to say it was really good because I have done a cheap version of flowers before and that wasn't very good. It was like, too finicky to get things to stick together properly so things kept falling off whereas these ones they just came together beautifully and I brought a vase for them um, so that I didn't take over our only actual flower vase and some of those like pebble things that you put in the bottom of vases and yeah I really love them I'm actually a little bit weird because I don't much enjoy receiving real flowers um, I think I just, I get a bit stressed about them being cut for it and how you have to look after them and then getting rid of them when they go all sort of old and smelly. I, I, I don't know, I'm making myself sound quite weird, but I don't particularly like them. Whereas these, I just, I love that they're, you know, evergreen. <laughs> Apart from dusting them a bit, I do not need to take care of them. So I really enjoyed that. And then I've bought two or three other sets to do with Lego of cheap Lego. But it's difficult because if I start working on that, I don't want to put it down and it takes up a lot of space. And you know, I do all this kind of thing at the dining room table. So yeah, I need to get a better setup really. And then also, you know, I, I don't want to end up not having time for diamond painting because I, it's, it's my favorite hobby. I love it. And I don't want to sort of get out of the habit, but also I need to have time for diamond painting because of the shop, because of testing putty and, you know, for this channel, I wouldn't want to lose the ability to put out content because I'm not really doing it anymore. So yeah, basically I think what it is, is I need about 10 extra hours in every day and then the energy to get me through that. That's not too much to ask, right? <laughs> Who can relate? Like who doesn't wish there were more hours in the day? <laughs> and the ability to enjoy them. I shouldn't complain really. I have a good life and I have plenty of time to myself. And actually I've got the day to myself today because my husband and son are out at, at football. I am. Um, they were doing a friendly with my son's usual team because the league season has finished, but they still do friendlies. And then they were going to Swindon, which is a town about best part of an hour away, um, 
because my son has been invited to join the development squad for a JPL team. And JPL, if you don't know what that is, because I certainly wouldn't have had a clue before he entered this world, stands for junior... Um, what's the word? Junior Pro League or Premier League or something like that. I, I don't think it actually stands for Premier League. I think it's Pro League. So basically, and it's nothing to do with actually being pros. I think it's just a name. But it's just, so you have like these grassroots football teams and they're in leagues. And then above that, you do have teams that are sort of put together from the creme de la creme, I guess. And, you know, I suppose those are the places where scouts will go and that kind of thing. And my son's not quite there yet, but he is very good. He is a very good little sportsman, tends to be good at every sport he tries. Um, and he got invited to be on the development team for that. So basically... The team, a training squad where they're developing people to see if they can get to the level of properly being on a, on a junior pro team, if that makes sense. And today they have a match and the ones that are just training have been invited to join in. So I don't think he'll have a lot of game time, but it'll be a really good experience for him. And I'm just hoping it goes well. <coughs> I would have gone along to watch. Um... But because it's a little way away, lots of people needed lifts. Um, so my husband actually offered a lift to some people. And then he, he rang me after they finished with a friendly. And it turned out, actually, they weren't giving people a lift anymore. But, you know, there wasn't time for them to pick me up at that point, which is a bit of a shame. However, it is nice to have a quiet day to myself because it's the start of the, the Easter holidays. And, you know, my son will be around, which is... Lovely, but also I, I am a person who likes time to myself and, and kind of craves it if I don't have that much of it. So, yeah. What else has been up? We've all been a little bit ill. You can probably still hear my voice. And I did put out a video the other week where I thought I was fine and then my voice was just gradually packing up as I went through it. <laughs> it was quite funny. We all had a cold, basically. Um, I was a little bit worried it could be COVID, <laughs> um, truth be told, because of the way it absolutely ripped through us. But in the end, none of us had anything more than simple cold symptoms. And, um, you know, we did test and no one tested positive. So I think we just had a cold and none of us were really ill, but it's really lingering. So I'm still a bit, you know, <laughs> gunky and occasionally coughing and that kind of thing. Blech. It's nice that it's spring now and the weather's getting warmer and hopefully some of these winter bugs will fade away a little bit. I was concerned as well because some of you may remember that back in January, around the time my husband and I turned 40, um, we all had a bit of a cough and cold bug and then with my husband it went to his chest and he ended up down at out of hours at half one in the morning because he couldn't breathe properly um, and he had bronchitis and he's never had issues like that before but now he has had it you know is is he gonna have a bit more of a tendency for it but that doesn't seem to have happened last week my mum came up all because my son, oh bless him. So he's in the brass band at school, which is really cool in itself because they have this band. Um, they do trumpets, saxophones, French horns, and now trombones. It's a guy who teaches them and it's brilliant and he volunteered to do it. And you never know, do you? Like my son is definitely one of those kids, as many are, who's all enthusiastic about trying something and then it fades away and he loses the bug. But he started it at the start of year four, which was last school year. And he's now midway through year five. I'm really enjoying it and coming on well, you know, like they are a bit tough with it. You know, they don't, because the kids come out of a different class in order to do it. They're like, the, the viewpoint is there's a huge value to learning an instrument and everything that comes with that and being part of a band. But as a kid isn't taking it seriously or they're not progressing like they should, 
they will be encouraged to leave the band because at that point it's not worth missing other lessons for if you see what I mean and there were times early on where the teacher said to us like does he like it because he's, he's not really progressing and we were like yeah he really really does love it and he said okay well we'll keep going for a bit and then some point after that it really clicked into place anyway so they do these concerts probably a couple of times in the school year and my son said to me a few weeks ago, I'm going to do a solo at the next concert. And I was like, really? Because I never would have expected him to, to do that, you know? Like, he, he'll put his hand up to answer questions in class, but he's not the kind of kid that would typically put himself forward for this kind of thing. And he said, yeah, lots of us are doing them. And I thought I would. I was like, brilliant, well done, you. But then over time, most of the kids have dropped out which is perfectly fair and reasonable, right? Doing a solo is scary. But a lot of them have decided actually that was not for them. But he has stuck it out and he, um, yeah, he did it. So they they always finish the concerts with when the saints go marching in. Oh, this lid's like stuck at an angle. Let's just check that actually works, yeah. Um, and yeah, there were, four instruments yeah the four instruments I mentioned someone did a solo for each of them in the end and he did the trumpet and it was brilliant you know there are a couple of squeaks if you want to be finicky but he actually did it really well because from what I've been told the trumpet is actually one of the harder brass instruments to learn um so yeah it was brilliant and I was so proud of him honestly my heart was racing while he was doing it because I just thought I don't care if he makes a mistake, but it will knock his confidence so much for the next time, you know? And like I say, it wasn't perfect, but then he's 10. <laughs> what 10 year old is gonna do a perfect fancy trumpet solo? It was as good as I could have possibly hoped for, and I was so proud. And my mum came to watch. Um, I can't remember if I said already that she was there. <coughs> She'd said to me before that she would like to come and watch him. And I said, oh, there's a concert coming up. But one thing his school is not great at is giving us notice of things. So they'll often be like, oh, there's a concert and it's in, you know, a week. <laughs> Which is a shame because we are incredibly fortunate that I work from home doing the shop. I'm completely in charge of my own time. And my husband has a job that is also very, very flexible. Most of the time anyway, like in term time he has more commitments in the university but even then if he really wants to be free for something he could usually move things around so generally the two of us can both go to these things but a lot of parents must miss out because they don't have much notice it's um yeah but anyway <laughs> so we had like a week's notice or a week and a half or something so I didn't think my mum would be able to come because my parents are always busy but she said yeah I can come so she came up on the train on Sunday. We were actually out for the day. We went down to Ascot where my brother-in-law has just moved to to see him and his wife and kid in their brand new house, which was very lovely. And then on the way back, we picked up my mum at Didcot train station um, and then brought her back to our house. And she stayed for two nights. So yeah, it was lovely. The concert was on Monday. We couldn't do a whole lot together because I had to work in the morning because like the lack of notice meant I couldn't arrange to be free really. It was um, a big posting day for me and I had to work through that. But we, um, after the concert, and my husband and son went to football training. We actually went to the pub, the two of us, <laughs> and I had a couple of drinks, which was a bit naughty on a Monday evening. But it's so rare that my parents were able to come up and it's been ages since my mum came up by herself. And it was just really nice to sit and chat, you know. So rarely to get, get to do that kind of thing and she's getting older and it's just, yeah. I, um, I really appreciated having a chance to do it. So that's been really good this week. Oh, the previous couple of weeks, actually I forgot about all of this. <laughs> it's felt at times like our house is collapsing around us. There has been quite a lot of issues around here. They say bad luck comes in threes, don't they? And we have had three issues with the house. So hopefully we're done now <laughs> because things seem to have calmed down. First of all, we had a block drain. 
so the, the sink was making very weird noises and when we checked outside the drain was just blocked. Oh no, actually this wasn't first because we thought maybe that was plaster from the first issue. So the first issue was that the kitchen ceiling started leaking. Um, our bathroom is above that and we had that bathroom installed in 2013. And so it's, it's not the newest, but still it's not been there decades. And we've had so many issues with it already. And this latest one is that there was an inlet pipe to the toilet. So luckily an inlet pipe. <laughs> Um, no gross water dripping through, which needed to be tightened. It was like a really simple fix, but of course you don't know about it until it becomes obvious, like with a drip. So there'd been this slow drip from the inlet pipe that then dripped down into the floorboards and basically made its way through the kitchen ceiling and there was loads and loads of water in there. So my husband had to clear it all out to let the water out and there's a hole in the kitchen ceiling I don't know this isn't the first hole we've had in the kitchen ceiling because of issues with that bathroom so that needs I mean it should have dried out properly by now but we're gonna have to get someone to fix that and then the following week we had this issue with the drain which we did wonder if it was because of all the plaster and stuff because you know things had got down the sink I don't know um, the guy who cleared it out said, you know, it was all the usual things that you see, like food residue and washing powder and stuff. And there's not a huge amount you can do other than putting bleach down it now and again. And then every few years, you're going to have an issue that needs clearing out. But that cost about £240 to fix. It was mental. He kept telling me about, well, he was, he was a bit overly chatty, that one. <laughs> He was telling me about everything. He, he had this incredibly strong drain cleaner that you have to be licensed to get. And he was like, no, I don't want to worry you, but eight bottles of this could dissolve a human body. <laughs> I was like, did you really just say that? He was, he was a strange individual. Um, my husband was around. I never felt threatened or anything. He wasn't, you know, creepy weird. He just didn't really seem to get boundaries in conversation. He was also doing things like marching around saying, oh, I'm an electrician too. You need to make sure that you have all your plugs off or you're using them. Oh, I see that they are off. It's like, do you not like check before you start lecturing someone? Anyway, <laughs> so that was number two. And then number three was the most dramatic of all, which was last Saturday. <coughs> when my husband suddenly said to me, um, can you come down here and, and sniff? And our gas meter and boiler are in a cupboard at the end of our kitchen. And he said, come sniff in the cupboard. And I did, and I couldn't sniff anything at first. And then after a while I was like, oh yeah, you're right. There is a smell of gas. Oh, we had a gas leak. <laughs> it was, I suppose it was a fairly small leak and hopefully therefore not that critical because it doesn't bear thinking about what could happen if you had a really bad gas leak and didn't notice. Um, because like you really couldn't smell it until you were in the cupboard. Um, <laughs> and we were a bit, I mean, sometimes like you just, you don't realize how, how new you are at this adulting, even at the grand old age of 40, until you have to deal with an issue. Because we were like, what do we do? So we Googled and it said to call an emergency number. And then my husband's like, well, let's see if we can find someone locally first. And I don't know why. I think we were both just panicking a bit. So we spent like five, ten minutes with him trying to call people, which of course is ridiculous because if there's a gas leak, it's an emergency. I think when it's not too big a leak, you kind of, you're freaked out, but you're not quite in the same, oh my God, this is an emergency mode. I don't know. I'm explaining this and you're probably thinking, oh my God, those idiots. Anyway, he couldn't get through to anyone and it only took a few minutes. And I was like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try this number. So I rang the emergency line. Saturday afternoon, someone picked up instantly, took all the details, um, and then said they would get someone out within an hour. Actually, they were checking things like, I'm, I'm wondering if I misheard him because this is so random. He said, do you have any uh, vulnerable people there or children or like dogs or things like that? And I said, well, we have a child and two cats. <laughs> and he said, how old is the child? And I said, 10. And he said, oh, okay, well, they have to be under five to count as vulnerable. And I was like, 
well, fair enough, because, you know, a 10-year-old doesn't need as much management to get out of the house quickly and stuff. But how come dogs? <laughs> you know, as much as I love animals, as much as I adore my cats, how are they more of a priority than a child? Anyway, um, but he said they'd come out within an hour and they actually came out 40 minutes later. Someone local that was obviously on call for the emergency line came out, made it safe, fixed the issue. We do still have to get someone out to fix. Basically, something had been leaking from the boiler onto a pipe and it was acidic, so it had caused a tiny hole. But it's a very, 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 very slow leak. Like, it didn't even leak while he was there. So he's patched up the hole and fixed the leak, um, fixed the, the gas leak. But there is still probably something leaking from the boiler, so we need to get someone out quickly before that happens again. But I say quickly, it would probably take months, if not years. So he did that and here is the, the public information thing that we didn't realise about. Bearing in mind my husband was calling around trying to find a local plumber to come out on emergency rates on a Saturday. There was no charge, which we never thought about, but of course makes perfect sense because they don't want people who've got a gas leak not calling anyone out to fix it because they can't afford it. So he came out and fixed everything. So within sort of an hour, an hour and a half of everything starting, we were all sorted and it didn't cost us anything. It's part of what you pay for on your gas bill, basically. Um, it covers the cost of that service. So yeah, lesson learned. But anyway, we've had our trio of household disasters now, so hopefully everything will be all right for a bit. Dear me, it doesn't make me laugh sometimes. I mean, we've been living together since we were 22. We're 40 now. We um, became homeowners in 2013. And okay, things like gas leaks aren't things that come up very often, obviously. But yeah, sometimes when you look back and you think how, how you handled a situation in the moment, you think, what were we thinking? <laughs> I spoke to a friend afterwards who works in health and safety type environment um, for an energy company. And she was like, yeah, you should have just called that number straight away. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even think about the fact this was your wheelhouse. <laughs> oh dear. I do make myself laugh sometimes with how incompetent I am at adulting still. Anyway, no harm done, we're all okay. Almost done. I've got a few hours before my husband and son are back, so I'll probably make a start on it. Um, and then I've got a new cat sitting job starting this evening. Odin. <laughs> make myself laugh. It, I thought he was called Odin because we'd just communicated through text, but when I went there, the lady said, well, my partner and I speak Spanish to each other, so we speak to him in Spanish, so he's Odin, but, you know, you can call him Odin, that's fine. And I was like, no, that's all right, you know, I have basic pigeon Spanish so then I was like hola Udin <laughs> and I thought she's gonna think I'm a right idiot <laughs> but yeah I'm looking after Odin till Tuesday morning he seems really sweet I'm looking forward to getting to know him she was telling me like she was warning me that they have things like cat camera set up and they've got a doorbell that records people and saying, you know, we're not spying on you. It's just, I was like, no, don't worry. I'm exactly the same. I'm exactly the same when I'm away. Um, but also she said when Odin was about nine months old, he's five now, they booked a cat sitter through this app that I use and they didn't come for three days. Um, bizarrely, she said they popped in to use the toilet at some point. But this kitten didn't have food or water for three days. Can you imagine how wrong in the head someone has to be to take on a cat sitting job and be responsible for this cat's safety for a few days and then leave them without food or water? He's an indoor cat, so he's just totally stuck inside. It's horrific. Made me feel really sad for him. <coughs> anyway, I will be extra attentive to him because four years ago he was traumatized. <laughs> I've got quite a lot of cat sitting jobs coming up actually. I'm having to turn some down where they're just, it's too much because if I take on too many, I 
can't juggle it around work and family life and it just, it all gets too much. And cat setting is something I do that I really, really enjoy. I love looking after the cats. Um, the extra money is really helpful because it's my diamond painting money um, that enables me to, you know, buy very much within reason what I want diamond painting wise and, and showcase things on this channel and all that kind of thing. But it's also not very well paid for the amount of time that it takes up. So yeah, I can't prioritize it over other things. Someone that I've cat sit for before asked me to do two separate two week long bookings in the summer. And it would have been nice money, but I've had to say no because two weeks of two visits a day is just too much. And it's at a time when we'll be busy anyway. And that particular household as well always pays me extra to do watering. Um, so it's like, fair enough, they're paying me to do the watering, but that's because it's intensive watering. It's, it, you know, it takes about 20 minutes and they need that done like every three days. And I was like, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't face it. I tend to only take jobs that are a week or so um, or less because anything more than that, I just, it gets too much going back and forth. Anyway, I am done. I didn't actually have many that didn't fit in the bags at all. Um, so I've wasted that bag there, but well, I'll find some use for it. But I'm all done. Oh, I'm excited. Lots of nice bright colours and then all the blues. Is it this one that there's masses of? No, it's this one. I'll probably get quite fed up of this shade. <laughs> but he's going to be adorable. Oh, I love him. This one was a limited edition when it came out and it was like a year ago. So obviously he's long since sold out. So there's also that little bit of special, like, you know, he's rare. I'm, I'm, it's nice to work on a painting that I have that I couldn't buy anymore, if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, that is enough rambling from me for one day. Um, I hope you've enjoyed keeping me company while I get this done. And I hope that you, will have had a lovely Easter by the time you watch this video because I'll probably get this up for you on Tuesday. So um, yeah, whatever you were doing, whether you celebrate Easter or were just enjoying having a bit of time off work, whatever it might be, I hope you had a good one. So if you have enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like on it. And if you have enjoyed the way I've done things here and you'd like to stick around, but you're not yet subscribed to the channel, I would love to have you do that too. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Bye-bye.